In this video, we will step away from science fiction and fantasy and towards science fact. Let me introduce you to the deep-toed camera sled Argo, finder of the Royal Mail steamer Titanic. Whilst this video might seem an odd choice of subject matter, it has much to do with the spirit of science and human potential as, say, Star Trek. I have been a Titanorak for as long as I have been a Star Trek fan. And just as the Starship Enterprise and the TARDIS of Doctor Who are tools used to carry our heroes towards adventure, so too was Argo. A dream requires effort and determination to come to fruition but it also needs the right tools, and Argo was the right tool. The name comes from the legend of Jason and the Argonauts, the best rendering of which is probably the Argonautica of Apollonius Rhodius. The Argo is a ship built by the shipwright Argus, and said by Catullus to have been built of firwood, with a prow of oak, so perhaps the keel was oak as well. According to Euripides in his Medea, the oars were pine. Jason sailed the Argo, believed by some in antiquity to have been the first seagoing ship, in search of the Golden Fleece. It is sometimes suggested that it is from the Argo that we get the word Argosy, referring to a merchant ship. Your mind is tossing on the ocean. There were your Argosies, with portly sail, like sign yours, and rich burghers on the flood, or as it were the pageants of the sea, do overpeer the petty traffickers, that curtsy to them, do them reverence, as they fly by them with their woven wings. Alas! It is more likely the word comes from a port city in what is now Croatia. Developed by Robert Ballard's Deep Submergence Laboratory during the first years of the 1980s and sponsored by the US Navy, Argo was to be a part of a deep sea visual imaging system consisting of a deep towed vehicle, Argo, armed with cameras, and a smaller ROV, called Jason, connected to that vehicle by a cable. Both would be unmanned, remotely controlled from a mothership on the surface. As it turned out, the combined system never materialised, but Argo, minus Jason, was tested and put to work in 1984 exploring the wreckage of two American nuclear attack submarines, the USS Thresher, lost in 1963, and the USS Scorpion, lost in 1968. A second expedition a year later had Argo revisiting the Scorpion immediately before taking up its role in Ballard's Titanic expedition. These sub-visits were classified at the time and are not mentioned in Ballard's book The Discovery of the Titanic, although what is was the lesson learnt from these wrecks concerning debris fields. Ballard decided to hunt for the Titanic's debris field rather than the Titanic herself. In 1989, Argo was again used to find a famous ship, this time the German battleship Bismarck. Argo, as we see it in its original configuration, weighed 2 tons and was 15 feet in length, 3.5 feet in breadth and 3.5 feet in height, not including the tail fin. On the 1985 Franco-American expedition, it frequently took at least an hour and 40 minutes to lower Argo to the sea floor, some 12,690 feet below the ship. The unmanned vehicle was not entirely alone, as it was inside a transponder net ensuring the oceanographers could keep a fix on Argo's position. In 1985, the French Oceanographic Agency, EFREMIR, supplied a research ship and a new side sonar system, SAR, and the plan was that they would map the area of the North Atlantic seabed and identify targets. 
the American Woods Hole Institute research ship NOR would then deploy Argo to visually confirm which target was the Titanic. It was a good plan, but Saar failed to adequately find a Titanic-shaped target, and so, like the Les Oies, before her, the NOR eventually found herself mowing the lawn, with only 11 days left and no Titanic. Effectively flying at around 50 feet above the ocean floor, Argo first explored a submarine canyon named Titanic Canyon by a 1980 expedition funded by oil tycoon Jack Grimm, as well as various impact craters and Grimm's supposed propeller. After walking in Grimm's footsteps, the 1985 expedition headed east. Back and forth, back and forth. Until, at the western end of line number 9, wreckage appeared on screen. It was just after midnight, the 1st of September 1985, when the graveyard shift, otherwise known as the Watch of Quiet Excellence, found something. And then the cry came, it's a boiler. It was a single-ended boiler from boiler room number one.